Inside Pediatrics contains real-life surgical scenes in a hospital environment. Viewer discretion is advised. On this episode of Inside Pediatrics. She honestly was one of the top five sickest children I've ever been involved in a transplant. Oh man, another procedure where we don't know the outcome. In the middle of America lies one of the busiest independent nonprofit children's hospitals in the country. Go inside the operating rooms and the transports. Go inside each family's journey, each patient's story. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Go inside pediatrics at Children's Mercy, Kansas City. Baby Zaya was born with a complex heart condition called HLHS. To survive, she must have two more reconstructive heart surgeries. But now, scar tissue from her first surgery is blocking her aorta. Zaya needs an emergency procedure now. Kids that have a single ventricle, their ventricles are already under a lot of strain. So what we're going to try and do is go in, blow a balloon up across it to try and create a small tear in the scar tissue and um, part of the vessel to make it larger. So C, B, and D are essentially normal. A is the one that is the problem. And you can see how much more narrow it is compared to the rest. Dr. Romans pushes a tiny balloon through Zaya's blood vessel. The balloon is slowly inflated to tear the scar tissue so more blood can get through. But too much pressure could cause a rupture or stop Zaya's weak heart. Letitia and Drew know this life-saving procedure has its own risk. This is probably the worst part. Just sitting here and not knowing what's going on. And we knew she would do great. To get that last smile is always the goal. <laughs> That's all we got until we get her back. Even though everything looks full size on the screen, um, we're just very aware of doing small, careful, well thought out movements and using as small equipment as possible just because the, her blood vessels are very small. So we want to minimize the damage to those because that will potentially impact her later. And if she needs future procedures, it decreases our ability to do those procedures. We're all pretty nervous about it. Anytime a kid goes in with poor ventricular function, it's really concerning. It still looks like there's quite a bit of narrowing there, so I just don't definitively know that it's going to be enough to let her ventricle recover. If the balloon procedure has not improved her blood flow enough, Zaya will require an additional unplanned surgery. Eight-year-old Leah was born with a malformed heart. Multiple surgeries bought her time, but her heart finally failed. Now, Leah's so sick, she needs an ECMO heart-lung bypass machine to keep her alive as she waits for a new heart. After more than five months on the transplant waiting list, Leah gets the life-saving call. We um, found out really early in the morning, this morning about 3.30, that um, this heart was for Leah. This is a great heart for her, the right size, pumping strongly, and um, we we're just ecstatic to share the news that today's her day. I stumbled across everything in the house trying to get to the phone, and I uh, stared in front of the mirror in the bathroom for about three or four minutes, then I was like, we got a heart. Felt like uh, we were uh, giving birth, and I had to <laughs> call everyone on a list and drive an hour to the hospital, but it was a good day, very good day. But Leah's gift means a loss for the donor's family. The emotion of thanking the donor family, and that was a, a huge piece of it. The emotion that they must be going through and, and our child getting to live. And uh, it was a really cool thing for me to be able to tell her today she was getting a heart. After a small celebration with the staff, Leah's family takes a moment for their traditional pre-surgery dance together. With her donor heart on its way to Kansas City, Leah's life-changing surgery is about to begin. It's playtime at the Metzingers. Chelsea and Jeff learned their second daughter, Josie, had spina bifida just before she was born at another hospital. Now she receives all her specialized care at Children's Mercy. 
Now, at almost six years old, Josie has received physical therapy since she was born, pretty much. She's had multiple surgeries, but overall, we've been pretty lucky as far as her medical treatment. Soon, Josie is going to be a big sister. We are 25 and a half weeks pregnant with baby Evelyn, and we recently found out that she also has spina bifida, very similar to Josie. With baby Evelyn finding out that she had spina bifida, we knew that fetal surgery would be an option and uh, immediately started taking the steps to come to Children's Mercy and take part in the fetal surgery program. Few hospitals perform surgeries on babies before they're born. Children's Mercy offers Chelsea and Jeff an opportunity to treat their unborn daughter with a fetal repair surgery that was not available for Josie. This is looking at an MRI image of Chelsea's baby. And then down here is actually able to picture the spina bifida. Because of the exposure of the nerves to the environment they're in, which is the amniotic fluid, that may render these nerves non-functional. If those nerves, their functionality is completely lost, there's paralysis. For prenatal diagnosis, there's the potential of prenatal repair, which will ultimately, we hope, lead to a better long-term outcome. So for the Metzingers, very different story this time around. Like any surgery, this procedure has risks for Chelsea and her unborn daughter. The fetal repair will not cure spina bifida, but will prevent additional damage to tiny Evelyn's brain and spine. For this baby, we have the option to explore fetal surgery. We feel like the benefit of that is worth the risk. The Blantons have been to Children's Mercy before. Well, you're getting it a lot easier than what I had. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> that's true, dude. Brothers Jacob and Sam both have pectus excavatum, a sunken chest. Sam had surgery a year ago. Jacob is coming in for surgery today. When we brought Sam back from the hospital itself, Sam was in a lot of pain. And it wasn't for a day or two. This went on for a long time. Since Sam's surgery, Dr. Sean St. Peter pioneered the use of cryoablation for this procedure to significantly reduce pain and shorten recovery time. This operation is the single most painful operation that we do for children. Cryoablation decreases the electrical conduction through those nerves. And what that does is it creates a type of degeneration within the nerve where the nerve still is alive, so it will come back to function. But it takes up to three months for that to happen. That's plenty of time to get over the pain that's associated with the bar placement. Knowing that Sam got it before and like uh, knowing that I'll recover like way faster is a huge relief. Jacob's brother was in the hospital for five days after his surgery with a lot of pain. With cryoablation, Jacob could go home pain-free tomorrow. Today's surgery will reduce pressure on Jacob's heart and lungs and restore his proper posture. And then we're gonna make two incisions on the side. Then we're gonna use that cryoprobe to freeze the nerves, four levels. And then we're going to pass the bar through. The bar's going to sit underneath the sternum, but outside the rib cage. So your sternum's going to sit on top of it, just like that. And that's what's going to fix the defect. OK, let's have you just portray a bag. So we're looking at the symmetry here. The bowl in Jacob's chest will be gone after his procedure. He can't resist showing it off one last time. Those are uh, sugar pops, Doc. <laughs> well done, Jacob. That's impressive. I frequently say that pectus excavatum is something you can eat a bowl of cereal out of. Well, he quite literally <laughs> took your, at your word. Quite literally. Built-in bowl. Why not try it out? It's pretty cool, in my opinion. You'll be fine. Dr. St. Peter's use of cryoablation in pectus excavatum surgery is so revolutionary other pediatric surgeons have flown in to observe how their patients could benefit from this new technique pioneered at Children's Mercy. 
Cryoablation is where we put a probe directly on the nerve that runs underneath the rib. So we put the probe on the nerve, it goes to minus 60 degrees Celsius in a couple of seconds, we hold it there for two minutes, and then it immediately thaws out and we go to the next nerve. And what that does is it creates a type of degeneration within the nerve where the nerve still is alive, so it will come back to function, but it takes up to three months for that to happen. And that's plenty of time to get over the pain that's associated with the bar placement. The outcomes are so dramatically different, it's gonna be difficult to justify ever doing the operation without the cryoablation. This is one of those operations that's really gratifying for both us and the patient, because it's an immediate repair for something that's bothered him for many years. Now he's gonna have to eat cereal out of a bowl because uh, chest won't do the job anymore. The heart catheter procedure improved Saya's blood flow, but she will still need the unplanned arch repair surgery. So we want to make her pumping chamber or ventricle function better, and we think we can do that by relieving the arch narrowing. Letitia and Drew know that Zaya's HLHS will require two more heart reconstructions. But today's additional procedure puts more stress on them and more risk on Zaya. It's a little nerve-wracking because we weren't expecting it. Another procedure where we don't know the outcome. We didn't want to hear the, the bad news. Nobody wants to hear the bad news. The waiting never gets easier. Scar tissue from Zaya's first surgery is putting strain on her partially reconstructed heart. When you're a single ventricle, it's very intolerant to narrowed blood vessels. And so we need to make sure that the blood vessel to her body is completely unobstructed. Zaya is placed on life support, and her heart is stopped. Then, the surgical team uses intricate geometry and patches to repair her blocked aortic arch and restore her blood flow. Dr. Douglas soon discovers he must also repair a challenging fold in Zaya's aorta, a vessel smaller than a drinking straw in a heart the size of an egg. Well, I can't say it was simple, but in the end, it looked, looked very good. So, you know, she, she really had a lot of scar tissue in there. I mean, you know, everybody makes scar tissue after surgery and after heart surgery, and, and she had managed to, to make a little fold in her blood vessel. We got a couple of nice patches in there and opened it up, and gradient's all gone, her heart's squeezing well, and, you know, it was, it was what we wanted to achieve. With blood flow in her heart greatly improved, Zaya is back on track to continue the path for HLHS heart reconstruction. It's hard, but I know she's doing better. And she's gonna make it. She's strong. In the Children's Mercy Fetal Health Center, Chelsea and her unborn daughter prepare for surgery. Got a head right over here today. I guess kind of laying sideways. Head, back. For me, this is a fascinating stretch of our medical knowledge in trying to make sure that we care for both patients simultaneously, one tucked inside the other one. So I'll see you in just a few minutes. OK. OK. It's surreal still to have so many specialists and experts in every field working together to take care of our child. It means the world to us to be here. Caring for two patients requires multiple teams, with surgeons, anesthesia, and transfusions for mom and baby. Every case is unique, and it's a compelling environment to be where you are kind of pushing the limits of our science. Let's check heart rate, please. We perform an incision on mom's tummy similar to doing a C-section, and we expose a pregnant uterus. Chelsea's womb is gently lifted outside her body, with the fetus still inside. We've got to get through the uterus. We have to open the bag of water, and then we have to manipulate the baby into an opening to allow for the spina bifida to be exposed. Now the neurosurgeon goes to work to repair the spina bifida of the fetal patient. The spinal cord is eased back into place, and the hole will be closed with patches. Now we have to close the bag of water, we've got to close the uterus, and we have to close mom's tissues and move her forward from that time of her repair and the baby's repair. With surgery over, both patients begin recovery. There is definitely a major relief level that this part is done. Still, you know, anxious about what's yet to come. This, I think, is the most stressful part. Thankfully, it's over. 
A fetal surgery is a unique potential to change a bad situation to a better. If you can take a babe who is destined not to be able to walk on their own and they can walk on their own, you just had a really good day. Three days after fetal surgery, Chelsea and little Evelyn are recovering well. I've gotten to see baby girl on the ultrasound maybe six times, and she is awake and kicking in there. She doesn't seem like she's in any pain, and everything seems really good for her. With respect to the ultrasounds, they're done each morning at the bedside. And the spina bifida, we don't see anything but the suturing from the closure. So from the baby's side of the world, everything there looks great. That was, that's amazing what they did. Just can't be more thankful about it. It's a wonderful deal. Our greatest hope for Chelsea's baby is that she's able to be walking on her own. That would be the home run for this child. Dr. Vlastos and the fetal health team will care for Chelsea and her baby through birth and beyond. Children's Mercy has one of the top heart surgery programs in the nation, but Leah is at very high risk. She is in critical condition, and because of her previous HLHS reconstruction surgeries, implanting a normal heart is extremely complex. She had every risk factor possible. I was scared of how sick she was gonna come out because of how sick she went in. But she came out and it was an absolute miracle. After more than 10 hours of surgery, Leah has beaten the odds. This is the big news. As of 8.30, her heart is beating on its own. Oh. I felt like I could breathe for the first time. I took a deep breath and it felt like it's, I've held my breath for six months. So we'll start with the before. Is this is, hers? This is her old heart. Oh my gosh. We didn't realize how sick her heart was. Seeing it next to a beautiful donor heart, a gift that someone has given us, wow. Oh my gosh. I am so thankful to the donor family. They had the strength to give that gift because they literally saved a little girl that was about to be out of options. She has to live two lives right now, you know, life for the, uh, for the donor family and, and her own, and she's got a big responsibility, and so do we, to play it forward, so. Half a heart to a full heart, yeah. 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 It's the morning after the surgery. I'm up, took a shower. For a long time, my pain was at like a zero. And, you know, then I'd get up and move around and be like one. Definitely not as stiff as Sam was. Sam couldn't even move the first day after surgery. Jacob is able to shower and dress himself with very little pain. His recovery is a lot faster than mine was. I'm absolutely amazed. Dr. St. Peter has done a tremendous job. We got here this morning about 8 o'clock, 8.30, and he was sitting up in a chair, sitting there talking to his brother. First thing Jacob said after he came out of surgery was, I'm going to go climb a tree. So that's a little bit worrisome. <laughs> he was in a better position than I kind of anticipated. Normally, you have a pain score of 3 to 4, even with a cryoablation. And to be able to put on his own shirt and to get up and, and bathe himself uh, the first day, he's in a really good position. Less than 24 hours after surgery, Jacob heads home with a striking new posture and almost no pain. Can't see the future, but if I did, I would say I'd be fine. Two months after arch repair, the Children's Mercy Champ team continues to monitor Zaya and dozens of other HLHS babies across the region as they wait for their second HLHS heart repair. And before the use of CHAMP, we had about 20% of kids with hypoplastic left heart syndrome that were passing away at home in between the first two surgeries, and that's not okay. For all 250 families that have used the app nationwide, um, we maintain a 3% mortality. We wanna share what we've learned and to see that we can continue to learn together as a heart community. 
Well, we've been home since the archway repair and things have been going good. Um, we haven't had any major problems. We say it all the time that we believe that Children of Mercy have saved Zaya. We fought for her to come out with a heart condition and for her to fight through that. I mean, we just gotta stay good until our next surgery. Uh, she's our, our miracle baby. I mean, we just have faith that, you know, my baby will be okay. Ten days after receiving her gift, Leah is making an amazing recovery. She surprised us. The first couple days especially, I was in, like, shock at how great she was doing. Because she honestly was one of the top five sickest children I've ever been involved in a transplant. Hundreds of specialists help Leah survive, and they will continue to support her as she recovers with a new heart and hope. Leah's story shows children's mercy and how it supports really complex children, mind, body, and soul. I think hope is the most important thing, and that's what I love about children's mercy. We give them hope, give them strength, and let them know they're not alone walking down this very difficult path. Thank you. Uh -huh. Leah and children like her are the reason over 700 pediatric specialists at Children's Mercy dedicate their lives to research, innovation, and compassion to improve the future of every child they can. My immediate goal is to get back home. Wow. Cancer-free. What will change lives at Children's Mercy? Love will. Children's Mercy brings hope and healing to kids who just want a chance to be kids again. Hope is the heart of Children's Mercy. So I'm coming home Where I know these moves I've been away a bit too long But now I'm coming home I'm coming home.